Welcome, Goerk, to Metalarium Pages. It's a great pleasure to talk with you about Serenity, this new live album, Memoria, and other things relating to the, bueno, to the metal world in general. So, for the starting the, the interview, how have you been during these, bueno, crazy times? We started a pandemic two years ago, now a war in Europe. So, who knows what happened the next couple of years? Perhaps a meteor will hit us and America save us like his Hollywood movies. Or perhaps, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> yes, who knows? That's true. That's true. That's true. You never know what's coming next. But in the end, I'm fine. Thank you very much. Um, for sure, the last year, years were not the best ones for musicians in general. That's clear. But in the end, uh, it's also it also has a good side, you know, because we were able to uh, record something like this memory album. Because without the pandemic, pandemia or without COVID, I think uh, this thing wouldn't have happened. Because it was planned like this, that in 2020, when we released our latest album called The Last Night, uh, we did a co-headlining tour together with Rage. And then for April 2020, there should have been another headliner tour uh, for Serenity. And uh, due to COVID, we had to postpone this tour. So we said, OK, what should we do now? Uh, we have a brand new album out. Um, we want to be on tour, but if it's not possible, let's do something else. So we created, for example, uh, this Nights Pub, where we invited our fans once a week or once a month, uh, having a chat with us and, and uh, just joking and so on. Then we did several um, merch days where we sold merchandise live online the whole day with singing some acoustic songs during the sessions and so on. And within these acoustic sessions, we came to the idea that it would be really something cool to record uh, a complete acoustic concert. Um, because for some months in Austria, it was the case that uh, concerts were able to happen, but only seating wise. So the, the, the people had to have a seat, you know, sitting wise and um, with mask, then suddenly without mask, but still sitting. Uh, so we thought, okay, let's do something like this. A theater, only seated, uh, reduced to 60 people. And let's record uh, an acoustic concert uh, under COVID restrictions. And that was the plan. So we did this crowdfunding. We presented the idea and the people loved it. So in the end, we had the budget to produce it. Uh, but then there was a second lockdown. So we had to postpone again the concert. Then we just checked out some uh, additional dates with the with the theater. And for sure, there was the third lockdown <laughs> in Austria. So in the end, that's the reason why the idea was born for Memoria in 2020. And the concerts took place in May 2022. That's the reason why Memoria is out now and not already since one or two years. Hmm. Okay, well, one question that, but that I, well, that I, that I, that I, well, that I saw in a lot of interviews that I did, is that many bands around the world are, well, recording the last album. Many bands released the new album, 2020, 2021, and they are recording and compose and writing new and write new material in to top for this 2022 or release new album, two albums, three albums, who knows? But uh, and because and why did you decide to put out an, a concert? And not a new album like most the most the albums most the bands doing during this pandemic, because I remember because according to according to what the comment or one opinion from a band in the past in, in all interviews during, during the Metalerion, he said told me he he told me that the uh, the the selling the selling part about the DVDs blu ray doesn't sell doesn't sell very well. Yeah, this is true. This is true, um, but. The thing is, due to that, we did this crowdfunding. In the end, the risk is not that high with this uh, with this release. Um, so, to be honest, I prefer to have a release out like this now, which was very special because I don't know. Have you seen it on your own? Have you seen the the video? No, the, just MP3. Ah, uh, okay, okay, just MP3. So, but yeah. on YouTube, the on YouTube, the singles. Yes, yeah, but watched... the, singles, the singles, yes, the singles, yes. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, because, you know, first it was really planned like uh, in between release. Uh, but in the end, it turned out to be honest, that great, in my opinion, um, that it's a, a full, a full release, in my opinion. Um, and so 
Although perhaps the sellings are not that good. I don't know so far because we just released it. You know, the feedback was great. So uh, I'm, I'm not thinking that it will be a complete flop. But uh, for sure, live CDs, live DVDs never sell that good than a regular metal album, than a regular studio album. But uh, it was a good possibility to stay connected with the fans and um, with all the guests and with the special surrounding and with the rearrangements. I think it was a perfect release to make it exactly under special conditions. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, so now... We are well. We are the, the the normally in the world. Are, I think we are very close to be normally again because a lot yeah. of tours, a lot of festivals. When they're still saturating now, according to when, well, according to Devin Townsend, I spoke with Devin Townsend. I spoke with Chris Christopher Ontario. There are a lot of problems touring in Europe now because are the the, the prices are high, too expensive to touring in bus. So, what is your opinion about this new? This new, this new era in buses, tour concerts, festivals, because I think now with the world, all is expensive now. For sure, it's really expensive. And um, the, the, the more important is the fact that fans still keep um, buying tickets in advance and that uh, fans are um, buying CDs, vinyls, T-shirts and so on, you know. Streaming for sure is a great thing. I also do streaming as well, but I also um, buy CDs and T-shirts uh, for my bands, you know, which I like. So in the end, I think this is the only possibility. I know that everything went or became more expensive, but in the end, we have to deal with it. You know, we cannot, we cannot change that. So uh, there's only one possibility, the fans have to be or have to support the bands even more than before with buying tickets, with buy, buying T-shirts. And then I think we all together, the huge metal community, brothers and sisters of heavy metal, we all are able to, to uh, solve this problem here. And perhaps in two years, in three years, we just love about the situation because everything will be quite okay again. Okay, one thing that you said in the answers on the first question, but well, the second question is that this DVD memorial are are like a, you did a crowdfunding to do this video on video. So how do you well how do you divide the how do you both the selling parts? Talking about the memorial because memorial are released by Naval Records, but you did the crowdfunding the stuff. So how this how do who who handle the well, the who who handle the economic entrance for this? Here's DVD. I mean, this crowdfunding thing, you know, uh, it, it's like a, a, a pre-sale. It is exactly like a pre-sale. So the people pre-ordered uh, the DVD, uh, including some special gifts or some special things like a VIP card where they get uh, a special reduction on T-shirts in our shop or in any other items. Then they got um, some stuff like signed um, cards, like um, a video message and so on and so on. So it's like a pre-sale. And then in the end, uh, Napalm just are distributing this thing. Because for example, you know, sending over a DVD from Austria to the US um, is costing us, I don't know, 25 euros, you know, just the postal service. And due to the channels through Napalm, um, it's easier to handle this uh, logistic thing here and so it was pre-financed by us by our fans and napalm are doing the distribution mm, okay okay well it's nice to hear that so well now talking about from the discography in general from serenity you started you start your career in 2021 then you delayed six years to release your first album words you weren't told and dreams and lives so for why this happened because in 2000s, we are modern lives now. There's more possibility to record albums, etc., etc. At that time, but it's, 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 it's for this is a it's weird. It's weird that a European band delays seven years and release of year of their first album. Yeah, uh, it's quite easy to explain because for sure the band and the name exists since 2001. Yeah. But uh, first, it was really only a. a 
because I was not part of the band. The guitar player back then, Tom, uh, was not part of the band. The bass player, Simon, back then was not part of the band. So it was a completely different band. Only the drummer and the keyboardist, Mario, a drummer, Andy, and the keyboardist, Mario, they founded the band, but more as a, let's say, as a hobby, you know? They just wanted to have fun. They, they had rehearsals uh, and they just recorded one demo CD in this time. And then end of 2004, beginning of 2005, uh, the lineup was completely changed. A new guitar player, a new singer, a new bass player. And uh, we for sure had a different attitude. We really wanted to, to make it happen, to, to become rock stars, <laughs> let's <laughs> say. And um, so there was a complete different attitude, like I said, from the beginning since the early 2005. And within four or five months, we recorded our first demo. Then we already got some offers from record labels. Then we uh, pre-financed our debut album completely on our own to get better offers from record labels. We went to Finland, to FinFox Studios to mix and master it there. We invested a lot of money on our own because now we really wanted it. You know, the old lineup was just like, you know, they, they are nice guys, but they didn't want to make it really. But with the new lineup, we completely wanted to make it. And so from 2005 it took us only one year with the new lineup to get a record deal with napalm records so then we were very fast the name is existing since 2001 but i always say the real history of serenity started in early 2005 mm. okay okay well other another accomplished from when another accomplished for the man is that since the beginning since 2007 you release your first album through Naples Records and the, the the last night, the last album, 2020, this was released by Naples Records. So all albums are released by Naples Records. So how do you see this accomplice for the band? Never change labels, never, or perhaps do you have other alternatives in the future? The thing is we would have uh, many alternatives, but in the end, never change a winning team, in my opinion. We are from Austria, the label is from Austria. Uh, we have a strong connection to our label. Uh, they believe in Serenity. Uh, for example, we do have now also a new production manager who really is uh, extremely into symphonic metal and melodic metal. Uh, one of the heads of Napalm Records, Thomas Casa, is uh, playing in Visions of Atlantis. So that means he is also really into symphonic and melodic metal. Uh, and we have our whole back catalog <clears throat> at Napalm's. So for us, uh, to be honest, it doesn't make sense to change the label. And one thing I also have to admit, Napalm is still is, is the last label not sold to a bigger major label or to a bigger uh, company. So I prefer to be uh, with Napalm in, instead of being with, I don't know, perhaps Warner Music. And uh, if Warner Music releases your album and the first album is not extremely successful, they will drop you automatically. And yeah, so better staying with Napalm, a really great working label with uh, big names in the meantime, you know, Alderbridge, Hammer, no, Hammerfall, not anymore, but Alderbridge or Powerwolf uh, and many other bands are on Napalm. So yeah. why not Serenity as well? Staying there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's a question of loyalty also. You know? Yeah, okay, okay. So, and so what talking about these as well, the, the, the bigger labels, talking about now, especially from Century Media and Naples, well, not Nuclear Blast, Nuclear Blast, these labels are changing the, well, are changing, changing the, well, changing the, changing the status. And these are with Warner Music, with the, with Sony Music Entertainment. So what are you yeah. opinion about now the metal war are entering to the big to the biggest label, to the biggest to the biggest leagues because this is mainstream, completely 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 mainstream stuff. It's quite easy to explain because the big labels now checked or the, the big companies like Warner and so on, they noticed that metal fans are still buying uh, physical products. That metal fans are still buying t-shirts, merchandise that they are still digging for really great cover artworks and so on and so on. Uh, so although, for sure, the metal community is not as big as the pop 
community. Um, I think we are really important for the industry. And so that's the reason why uh, these labels were bought by the, the major labels now, because the majors saw, okay, there is still money to grab uh, with the fanatic metal fans. Mm. Well, okay. Okay, now, well, now your, your last album last night was released in two years ago. So I think this one, the next coming, the next couple the next couple tours that you have in the next the next coming months or years, you will promote this album, or perhaps you will promote you will promote a new album that that is Spectrum. Who knows? Yeah, uh, we're just finishing songwriting for our upcoming album, which will be out uh, in summer, early autumn, twenty twenty three. So upcoming year, there will be a new studio album by Serenity, uh, followed by uh, a tour, a headliner tour through Europe. Also, perhaps uh, some dates in the US and some dates in Asia. Mm -hmm. Great to hear. Hey, what what about to 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 came to Latin America? Do you have opportunities to came here to man to see Serenity uh, life? No, we really would love to, but the problem is for sure that the costs are uh, fucking crazy. You know, uh, to fly over there and then uh, that's also the next problem when you tour South America or Latin America. Also, in between the gigs, you know, you have to fly <laughs> because yeah. the distances are that far. For example, in Europe, you can play every night a concert with only driving 200 kilometers. In South America or in, in Latin America, 200 kilometers is probably still the same city. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yes. yeah, so yeah. that's that's the problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, talking about well, talking about all of the aspects, as I said in the first question. So, what is your opinion about now the music industry change? Oh, and are we are returning to the to the basic stuff when the music are promoted in the forties, thirties, or fifties by singles spread at that time, and now we are living again this time to to promote just singles in no whole albums. So, what is your opinion about now the the public? The public are focused more on singles, not not albums. Um, yeah, it, it's mainly because of the streaming thing. Uh, due to that, uh, although there are still many metalheads buying albums and CDs, for sure, especially the younger generation, they're only doing streaming. And so in the meantime, it's uh, sometimes better to, to be always, uh, let's say, uh, in the media to release single by single and then when you released five, six, seven singles, then you just bring out the album just as a collection, a single collection, let's say. Um, so this, I think, is only economically wise because you have to be always somehow up to date. You always have to be on YouTube with new stuff, on Spotify with new stuff that you don't lose monthly listeners that you don't lose the attraction and so on and so on. So that's the reason why we are going back to this single releases instead of, for example, like, you know, you cannot afford anymore, especially as a younger band or as a mid band, you cannot afford like Blind Guardian are doing it, uh, releasing one album, then waiting four or five years to release another one. This mm. is this is for for many other bands it's not possible because you have to release constantly music that you are able to do constantly touring and only with this you earn money because mm. with the sales of the records and so on in the end it's too less money to live out of it yeah yeah, but one thing that you said is that now the bigger bands, I'm talking about especially the power metal, one are one are their their status gained during the years, well, since the nineties, blind, blind Guardian, Stratovarius, they always they always sell in copies. They always it's not it's not necessary to release well, to release new songs for for them because they are they are. They are position and they they are mainstream bands talking about the power metal or or whatever metal they play. Especially especially the the bands that that you talk. But what is your opinion about now the new generation of bands that are releasing singles continually, EPs, albums, compilations, but not got got the attention like you. Serenity has a position we compared to the new bands. It's very difficult for the new bands. To, to came up and, and show new things to do is very difficult. So what's your opinion about the new bands 
doesn't have the same opportunity that, that you got from in, in in the beginnings of 2000s or like Blind Garden in the 90s or exit the 80s, 70s, etc., etc. Mm. Um, I think to be honest, also Serenity was already too late with this kind of music because we released our first album in 2007, like you said. Uh, and so the big power metal hype was already gone, you know, because um, if we would have released our first album or a second album in 1999, together with Sonata Arctica, with Rhapsody and with Ed Guy, uh, Serenity for sure would have been somewhere else than we are nowadays. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm really happy with the situation or with the position of Serenity, but already we have been too late with our song, with our sound. And nowadays, uh, for sure, it's really, really difficult for a power metal band to, to enter the scene. But on the other side, there are still power metal bands uh, really growing, growing, growing. Like, for example, like Power Wolf, like Sabaton and so on. They are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And some of the older power metal bands like Strato, Sonata and so on, they are becoming smaller and smaller and smaller again because they are not delivering a huge show. They are not delivering an image. So I think for a new band to, nowadays, it's very important to have a concrete image because younger people, they for sure, they want to listen to music, but they also want to see something special because of all this social media and movie stuff and so on, you know, they, ex they expect a huge show with fire, with costumes, with whatever, uh, to make it special. I mean, you know, for example, it's the same with, it's the same with Rammstein somehow. Um, millions of people are attending Rammstein shows, uh, but perhaps only 300,000 from these millions are really going there because of the music. They want to see the show. And if you go to a Sabaton show, uh, you would be also a bit disappointed nowadays not seeing the tank on the stage, uh, not seeing fire and so on and so on. And it's the same with Power Wolf or with some other or Ghost. You know, why is Ghost so successful? Or also back then Slipknot, you know, the music is one side, but it's the image. And this is something that changed completely, in my opinion. Also. If there, there was, you know, also in the back, there were always some extraordinary bands with a concrete image. For example, Queen, you know, they, they, were, they were very, uh, um, you know, they, they, their show was more theater than only music, you know. And um, this is something I think the new bands have to take care of. Only staying on stage with jeans and T-shirt nowadays doesn't work anymore. Okay, okay. So relating to this one, the new bands are very difficult now to what well, to to get more attention to, to get more attention from the public staff of the fans in general. So in this aspect, what is your opinion about the Nergal the Nergals from Behemoth told, told for all media that new musicians should be dedicate themselves to to get jobs and no more music anymore because the music industry are too saturated to to see more bands, new music, etc. Now, nah, I think this this is shit. Uh, I mean, for sure, this is also clear because I know many musicians within the scene. They uh, they tried everything, and in the end, it didn't work to become so big that uh, financial wise they are safe. So, to be honest, I would not be interested um, having the 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 need that I really have to tour until I'm seventy five years old. You know. So um, in, my, in my example, for example, as you can see, I'm sitting here in my office right now uh, at the university. So I have a normal day job. I have a normal day job, which I love uh, as much as I love music. So this is something I really can advise to everybody entering the scene or perhaps already being in the scene. Try to find next to music another passion uh where you can also do your job when you're ill when you can do your job um when a crisis like covid is coming around but for sure not everybody is having this interest and passion in a second lag you know but yeah in my case 
I'm completely fine with it because I love serenity. I love being on tour. I love music, producing stuff and, and uh, being on stage especially. But I also love to be here at the university, having my lessons in front of students and seeing that they uh, learn something, that they uh, connect uh, facts and so on and so on of history. So for me, it's completely fine like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Well, we're very close to in this interview, uh, Georg. And for that, what are the future plans? Well, that you told me that you you are completely the recording process of the well, the writing process of the new album. So, what is yeah. it in general? What is the future plans that the band has to promote much better, much better this new memoria, perhaps the new album, or perhaps new new a new single upcoming from the new album soon. Um. Yeah, first of all, for sure, we're going to do, like I said, first of all, we have to finish the recordings. We will enter probably in February, March, the studio uh, to record everything. Then mix mastering and so on will last until uh, end of May. Then uh, the album will be probably out in August or in September uh, with, for sure, two or three singles. And then in September, October, we're going to tour, uh, we're going to tour Europe. Uh, within summertime, we play some festivals, presenting already one or two new songs. And then uh, the plan would be also early 2024, doing more tours and playing uh, cities which we played, uh, which we haven't played in autumn 2023. Mm. Okay, okay. Um, one of the few, one of the, one of the last questions. And as as you can see, well now it's possible to to interactive with with a artificial intelligence because as you as I think you know that is a software and source and in gen and internet. Then when you put a little descriptions, this software create art. So you seen cover art, but with this, the art in general art related a lot more with the artificial intelligence because you can because you can use a guitar pro like guitar pro software and with the guitar pro you can put some notes and the notes and the machine and when this this artificial create drum machines guitar machines etc etc more machines into the so what is your opinion about now the artificial that is more involved into the music industry into the art in general and for do you think that in do you do you uh, for the future will you listen will you listen for the future of the first album from for artificial intelligence completely created just by machines no, no, because music uh, has to be connected with human. Uh, and if there is no connection between uh, music and human beings anymore, then I quit listening to music. Or let's say I just will stay with the old music where I know that somebody is behind it. And uh, I mean, you know, for example, if you just um, switch on the radio and you hear this, this auto-tune pop shit, uh, where one guy is sitting in a studio programming something and that's the new hit. Yeah, to be honest, I'm too conservative for this to, to, to like it. So for me, this is really not a, not a possibility at all. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Well, Georg, the sad times arrived at this interview. I hope you enjoyed this one like me doing this one. It's a great pleasure to know. Perhaps you want to add something to your Latin American fans and Metalero followers. First of all, thank you very much also to our fans in Latin America for your huge support for yeah more than 15 years now. <laughs> I, I think you can see it on my head that I'm not <laughs> the youngest anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it would be really cool to tour Latin America and South America one day. Hopefully this is something really quite high on my agenda for the future that we're gonna do a show or a tour in your beautiful countries hope to see you soon and just uh keep an eye on serenity because we're gonna release a new album in 2023 with fantastic melodic symphonic power metal 